Good evening and good day to all my fellow travelers, photographers, and friends around the world. Welcome to Chris Lee Travel Channels. I wish you all in good health. Indeed, this travel channel is now one year old. I thank all of you for the support and the encouragement. And our tour today uh, will focus on the cars landscape involving deep reef cuts, river gorge or canyons that is the Marling River Gorge or canyons and as well as the beautiful cast towering mountain peaks regions in one Fongling both places are located between the Xingyi County now, if you are first time logged into my travel channel and you want to have a better understanding of Guizhou province and the innate minority cultures, customs and traditions, please view the previous episode of my journey to this Guizhou province. And please note that the area color in red in this map of China is the whereabout of Guizhou province, a landlocked and mountainous province. Now, further to my last week episode, today episode, which is the 10th episode of my travel journey to Guizhou province of China, my journey continues right, in this southwestern region of Guangxi province, oh, sorry, Guizhou uh, province, the Qingxi Nan, Buyi, and Mel Autonomous Prefectures. And the location of these prefectures is as highlighted in yellow color in this provincial map of Guizhou, which is bordering to uh, Guangxi province uh, at the south and Yunnan province at the west regions. Now, this prefecture consists of two cities and seven counties and is one of the few autonomous prefectures in the southwestern most region of Guizhou province. And please note the whereabout of Xingyi County in this map. Now, this prefecture is located in a high plateaus region cover an area of 16,806 square kilometers with a Xingyi city as the prefecture's capital. With a population of around 3.1 million in the year 2010 and of which the Han Inuit groups took up 61%, while the Buyi uh, took up 28% and Miao 7%, and the remaining 4% are other minority Inuit groups, such as Yao, uh, Ji Lao, and Hui uh, Inuit minority. And interestingly, this prefecture is gold producing region in China. And topographically, most part of the prefecture were either under cast plateaus or cast terrains, which cover nearly 70% of the total land area. Uh, due to large area under this cast land form, uh, these prefectures offer beautiful cast landscapes, pleasant climates, and profound cultural heritage to their visitors. So let's begin our exposure to this cast lens form in this region by understanding the uniqueness and the key feature of cars. Now in this image, first of all, it comes to your view is for beautiful scenic uh, picture. And basically this scenery are found abundantly in a uh, cast lens form regions, which I intend to introduce to you today. Let's begin our exposure in this case. Firstly, cast is a scientific term named after the geographical district between Slovenia and Trieste of Italy, which has a very distinct landscape. And cast is therefore a term refer to topography form from the dissolution of soluble rocks such as limestones, dolomite, and Evaporatic rocks. Therefore, cast lens form 
mainly found in landscape or limestone regions. It is characterized by the underground streams with sinkholes, caverns, and spring feature of karst landscapes produce ridges, towering peaks, fissures, sinkhole, and other characteristic landforms such as deep cut gorge or canyons, as well as disappearing stream. Karst landforms are found abundantly in Guangxi province, eastern, uh, eastern Yunnan province, and Hunan province, besides Guizhou province. Popular sites such as the Yangshuo of Guangxi province and the Pujehei of Eastern Yunnan province, as well as Zhang Jiajie of Hunan province. Now, well, let's begin our journey for today. The Manning River Gorge or canyons is located in the region at the junction between three provinces namely the Yunnan, the Guangxi, and the Guizhou province. It belongs to Guang Guizhou province, and the location is marked in this map. Now, it is a long and deep, rich cut uh, gorge or canyon by the Manning rivers of length of approximately 75 km, and of average depth, vary from 200 to 400 meters and the narrow spot of the gorge or canyon is only 50 meters in width. Now this scenic spot is famous for its deep cast gorge and this spectacular uh, large number of waterfall of not less than 100 of them. Uh, most of them are of height more than 100 meters above ground, and other interesting features such as the Karst Cave and Calcium Tapestry. So my visit covered only a short stretch of Maling River Gorge where the waterfall are abundant. Now our journey begins basically from this area. It involved descending into the base of the gorge and uh, we have to walk on the, those well-constructed paths and from one end to the other end and a certain stretch of the path are formed by digging into uh, the surface of the cliff as can be seen in the subsequent images. And the steep cliff surface of the gorge, mostly of this nature, and at the lower section and near to the bottom of the gorge. Whenever there is a large piece of flat land, it's turned into a resting zone for the visitor uh, with uh, sitting benches or stove provider. And we finally reaches the bottommost section of the gorge and we were walking along the edges of gorge side by side, you know, with the Maling River. Now, then we saw, you saw the bridge in this image at the far end. This is a bridge that's spanning across the gorge, right? Which is between view and we were walking toward the bridge directions until we were right below it.
And this the view and the bottom section of River Gorge and a very scenic and beautiful. Uh, we, the mist formed by the tiny water droplets from the above. Can you see the mysterious at the uh, one corner of this image? You can see the water droplets that uh, hit on the surface of the river from this image. And we have more view of the cliff surface at the lower section of the gorge. And we then walk across over uh, the river through this suspension bridge. Then we walk along the path, again formed on the edge of the cliff, on the other side of the river, and then in the opposite direction to what we uh, came from. And then you can see more scenic views of this uh, section of Maling River Gorge on our return journey. And then we then start spotting some sizable waterfall on the returning journey. And at this point, the gorge is certainly widened. And um, of course, more light, light, sunlight is able to penetrate deep into the lower section of the gorge. Then we will come to another uh, suspension bridge, which we make another cross crossing back to the side other side of the river. Here you can see uh, some of tiny waterfall in every corner around the gorge. Now, in actually, it's in these sections that uh, where the so-called famous Rainbow's Waterfall is encountered. I will explain to you more what you mean by Rainbow, uh, Rainbow uh, Waterfall. Now, as there are nearly 100 waterfalls uh, in this area, in certain stretches of the gorge, the waterfall are closely uh, spaced together and few very closely spaced waterfall then form a water curtains. Uh, when the waters from the waterfall fall near to the base, the falling water forming a mist covering the entire bottom space of the gorge, basically all become a very, very tiny uh, water droplets. Then when sun rays penetrate into the inner space of the gorge, the rainbow is then formed. And of course, some visitors like to refer this phenomena as a rainbow waterfall. Unfortunately, we did not encounter or we did not 
uh, see any rainbow during our journey there. So this is actually the uh, suspension bridge that we cross over uh, to other side of the uh, Maling River. And then finally, right, uh, we come to the end of a visit in this uh, Maling River Gorge. And after crossing the second suspension bridge, right, that's where we are walking back to our starting point. And then at this point, you found that uh, we need to ascend back to the ground levels. Our journey basically is actually a uh, and elongated circular loops in the Maling River Gorge. Now, at this point, you have a choice to either you take elevators up, which a small fee will be charged, or you decided to climb the steep step all the way back to the ground level, which 200 meters above ground from you. And at the downstream of the canyons, uh, rafting activity is available to visitors, but this is not part of our travel itinerary. Uh, itinerary. Sorry that I can't share anything with you today. Uh, you will need at least a full half day to explore this section of River Gorge. But if you want also to take part in the uh, rafting activity, uh, then you may need to allow more time. A day may not even enough. You probably need to have uh, two days. This strictly is my personal opinion. So let's move on our journey to next destinations, which is basically the one phone link in the same uh, county, basically the Xingyi County. Now, Wan Fong Ling is a scenic region located southeast of Xingyi City in Xingyi County, southwestern Guizhou Province of China. Now, it's the region famous for karst uh, ge geological landscape with abundance of marvelous cave, canyon waterfall, mountain peaks, cliff, river, stone forest, as well as underground river. And Wang Feng Ling in Chinese simply means translate into 10,000 peak forests. It's not only been regarded as the top six peak forests, but also the largest cast peaks forest in China. Now, it's a picture squad countryside for landscape lovers and photographers. Uh, this scenic region has been divided into two distinct zones, and the eastern and the western zone. All images that you are seeing so far are taken at the eastern zone, basically a lot of towering peaks right and at the western in uh in uh, sorry in the eastern western zone and in the eastern zone is a full of towering peak of cast landscape while the western zone is mainly of a plateau filled with the farmlands and a few villages of Inik Buyi people. Now, these farmlands are mainly ripseed farms, as can be seen in one of the images I'm going to share with you later on. So, you can see from the image now, you have, can see more and more farmland, but you still see towering uh, peaks at the background of the image.
For your info, uh, all these images were taken in the morning sessions. So you still can see the mistiness of the uh, surrounding view. Here now we move on to uh, reach the western zone. So you can see now you can uh, see uh, villages in the picture. And uh, my journey in this one phone links uh, involved trekking along a uh, eight kilometer long well paved road on a nearby hill, overseeing the entire scenic regions. And along the trail, of course, there are many viewing spots with six stopovers stations have been pre-designed for visitors. And uh, it's just a personal advice. If you want to save walking on the 8 kilometer long trail, you can opt for a paid shuttle bus ride. Right? And uh, the thing is, this uh, shuttle bus ride journey uh, will take about 90 minutes. And with six stopover, each stopover is approximately three to four minutes only. And you, it's not like those shuttle bus in other scenic region. When you on board this shuttle bus, is your shuttle bus for the whole journey. So therefore, when they given you a three minute stopover, you have to get back to the shuttle bus within the three minute time limit. And because of that, personally, I found that as a photographer. Uh, when you come to a very scenic spot, sometimes two, three minutes is not sufficient for you to take picture because you might probably want to set up your tripod and you probably have to take many, many angles, many, many images, and probably you will spend half an hour or even longer to some of the photographers. So it is only for normal, um, casual visitor which which are not the vivid, uh, so called the avid photographer, right? But as a photographer, I still prefer you do the 8 kilometer trekking, taking your own pace in the entire journey. So because of the beautiful scenery, each year between the month of February till April, when the rib seed flower blossoms, it turned the entire plateau as though it had been covered by a large blanket of yellowish receipt flowers. Now, although during our visit, if we are not in season, so we can't really see any uh, scene of that nature, but basically you can see the farmland, all right, green farmland. Just imagine all this green farmland turn into yellowish color when you come in the right season. Uh, this is one of a very beautiful Buyi uh, Inik minority uh, village. Uh, here we are, is the image that I've just inserted, uh, just to give you an idea of how it will look like imaginatively that the, all the entire flatland, the farmland, had turned into a completely yellowish in color. It gave you a magnificent uh, view, and that's the reason why each year, that uh, during the right season, that this area was foxed and crowded with photographers from around the world. Now, a point to note for photographer that the morning uh, in this region uh, is usually foggy. As you can see from my previous images, 
uh, we didn't manage to get a bright sunny day uh, image here you are you can see the mist that are forming uh, as a fire and so the visibility is quite uh, uh, quite short I'm saying that uh, you cannot see the front clear uh, color is vivid color only at the front section while at the back there you can see that it's actually uh, a bit uh, foggy um, and and that the in the, in the sense that you cannot see it clear because of the uh, uh, the mist that form during these morning hours And then, of course, uh, between this uh, scenic trail, we spotted a temple, a uh, small but beautiful worth to visit if we have the spare time. And of course, that the priests do not uh, miss to try the authentic meals of this unique Bui minority in one of their villages nearby. So finally, here comes the end of my 10th episode of my journey to Guizhou and hope that you have been entertained. And if you like my channel, please support by subscribing, sharing and like. A thumb up from you is very important to me. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you in advance for supporting this travel channel. Now it is important to note that my Guizhou journey took place in the year 2011. Thus, all images in these travelogues are of 10 years old. So, viewers are reminded that the present condition of these tourist spots could be different from my travelogue images as they are managed by operator and over the last 10 years, things could have changed because they could have upgraded their common facility and, uh, and many things could have happened anyway in a, a span of 10 years. And just a preview of the 11th or my last episode of my travel journey to Guizhou, I will bring you to a very scenic spot that full of waterfalls, stream, pond and natural landscape is a 5A rating site by the China National Tourism Board. Please stay tuned, particularly if you are a nature lover and landscape photographer. So before I end, I would like to wish you all in good health and please stay safe and stay strong and I shall see you next week. Bye.